Chefs, if you don't know, get an Austin Library card. They have an unbelievable uh, library of books. And that's not just at the downtown location. All of them do. And if you want to, you can log online and you can reserve a book and they will drop it off at your neighborhood library too. There you go. Thank you. That's good public service. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to the Austin All Day Culinary Tales podcast. Jason Powers here, and I would like to welcome Chef Kurt Seavers of Sway. Formerly a chef at Flower Child, but now joining the Sway Thai team at the Domain. You guys sit back, grab a drink, and check it out. Chef Kurt, Kurt Seavers. That's right. In a little uh, transition here. Yeah, from uh, from from working for uh, Fox Restaurant Concepts for, I guess, right at three years now. Um, wonderful. And then, yeah, wonderful, wonderful company. Yeah. Love the company. Um, really helped them build out kind of the Texas uh, Texas arm of the Flower Child restaurants. Started in Dallas at um, the first location they had there. And quickly moved up the ranks there. And then when Austin came available, I said... I want to go back. I'd lived here for, oh, 10 years previously um, in the 2000s, early 2000s, late 90s, and then moved back to Dallas and swore to God that I'd never come back down here unless I had a job to move back down here. And then it showed up and it was the right time, right place. Came down here, started uh, opening the restaurant downtown on 2nd Street, and then, you know, throughout the last two years have bounced back and forth. I've kind of been there guy who bounces back and forth and help fill in holes. Okay, from the both. domain in the second. Yeah. Um, I was the longest tenured chef with the company in the state of Texas, so okay. I ended up bouncing back and forth. They kind of knew I knew the brand and knew the standards and wanted me to kind of uphold that when the regionals were out of town right. or, you know, going to... Because the company is still in such a budding phase, <clears throat> they're not lacking, but uh, I feel like sometimes the... Regional guys were stretched kind of thin. I mean, they were going to Atlanta. They were going to Colorado. So A lot of traveling. Yeah. And so a lot of time, Austin t- went by the wayside because this is where they lived. Both of them do. So, oh, okay. you know, they were here when they were in town. They'd come by, but they also had to stay home and do work. I mean, I understand there's a ton of administrative work that goes into being a regional, having 10 restaurants under your belt. Sure. That type of thing. And uh, about two or three months ago, started, you know, prospecting for jobs, kind of looking around, see what was going on around the city. Sure. Um, Talked to some of my friends, and someone told me, well, New Waterloo was hiring for something. Um, And so I started to look into it, and starting on January 6th, I'll be the uh, CDC at Sway. Sway. Yeah, at the the, the domain. At the domain. Yes. Very cool. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Good people over there. Very excited. Love, Love the atmosphere. Love the people. Charles is killer. He is. Um, the two sous chefs they have there at the store right now are awesome. Um, and funny you guys go back a little because he was with Fox. He was with Fox. I didn't really know him with who is when he was at Fox. I think he was just transitioning over when I moved down to Austin. He had been the EC, I believe, at North Italia. I remember him at, at the North. domain. Yeah. Um, and then he moved over to New Waterloo, kind of took over Sway. It's kind of his baby. Um, and then also, funny uh, story, but. The other two chef de cuisines for both restaurants, because they run an executive corporate chef. Chef de cuisine runs a restaurant. For for Sway. For Sway. Yes. They don't run, you know, a normal EC, ESC, SC type situation. So uh, the person that was down at the South First location, or Dirty South, Dirty First as they call it, yeah. uh, was Justin Holler, which I believe you know as yeah. well. Used to be at Flower Child as well. And before that had been at Sway. And uh, he kind of tipped me off to it a little bit. And I had already applied for it. And he said, yeah, have you applied for this? You know, and I said, yeah, yeah. And he said, okay, well, uh, we'll see what we can do about getting you in. And, you know, sat down with an interview with Charles, with Dan, a lot of the people, the uh, director of culinary there. Okay. And uh, I guess he's food and beverage director, I guess is the proper title. Yeah. Um, and talked to him. And, uh, you know, it, Good it seems like a match made in heaven at this point. I mean... Uh, it's something I've really always wanted to do, which is run a Southeast Asian place. There you go. Um, yeah. That's a big part of it for me. Um, cool. I told I told Flower Child and and my bosses there and uh, my chefs there. I said, you know, this is purely 
a uh, like a uh, it's purely for myself and for happiness. It has nothing to do with anything you guys you guys sure. have done. You know what I mean? It was just one of those situations where it was like it's a no brainer. Uh, to me, I've had a good three year run with them. I tend to stick to jobs for a really long time. So, you know, three to five years is kind of where I was at Hyatt for five years before that. And then right. had my uh, little restaurant in Dallas for a while as well. So, you know, it, it just seems like it's a, a good fit for me. Um, get back into the creative side of things is where I was, you know, more learning the uh, managerial. Uh, side of it and learning some really great systems and stuff from Fox, which they have in place. I mean, it's it's really second to none as far as companies I've been in, as far as oh, we need to achieve this goal. Well, they literally have a person at home office who says, what report do you need? I will build it for you and send it to you. So if we're running, if we're running too many steaks, let's say we're, cutting, we're pre-cooking too many steaks. Well, we need a thing that shows us how many Steaks we sell between this hour and this hour. 15 minutes later, boom, your numbers guys shot you back a, a thing. And you can give it to your staff and go, here you go. So only have this many ready because this is probably the cl- closest you're going to get. And it perfect. all works and mostly. It, most of the time, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 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 all based on two-week rolling averages. So, yeah, I mean, it it's pretty accurate unless you have, like, you know, a nor- uh, abnormal spike like a holiday or something like that, which is never going to. Yeah, show up in the numbers. So many, many folks listening know of Fox, Mm -hmm. but tell us more about the restaurants in the under the umbrella there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, In Austin, we have well, actually, in Austin, we only have one Fox restaurant anymore. So there's yeah, there's more news to follow. Yeah, exactly. So we have two. There was two Fox restaurants. There was originally True Food North, um, CDO, and Flower Child. Good. Times changed so quick. True exactly. Food, forgot about them already. Exactly. True yeah. Food was, you know, that collaboration between, oh, I can't remember what his name is, some, uh, one of those doctors that's on Oprah and, yeah. and Health, Sam. Health yeah, exactly. Anti inflammation doctor. I believe he's a professor at Harvard or something. Right. right. Andrew Weil. That's his name. Okay. Um, and so that was sold off to Centerbridge, which is P.F. Chang's. And then after that, we knew that there was a possibility that Cheesecake Factory was going to take over f- North. We knew that for sure. What's now, the thought in the kitchens like amongst you guys when you guys are, got that over your head? I think there's a lot of – there's two sides of it because I think it's the same thing. You have cooks who are like, fuck this. I'm not going to work for this corporation. Yeah. That's not what I signed up for. I, you know, I signed up for the benefits and I signed up for good pay, but – I'm not going to, you know, there's punk rock kids who yeah. don't, you know what I mean? Who like, you know, fuck the man, I'm not doing this. And they'll go to Juniper or, you know, something sure. local, whatever it may be. Let's throw out, you know, a million names. Foreign oh, and domestic. Who, yeah. What are you going to say? Entero, Juniper. Those yeah, are exactly. Great places. All of them. Amazing. That being said, it, it does give a little bit more of a family feel, you know, when you're uh, not such strict rules, I guess you could say. A little sure. bit more creativity and a little bit more freedom. So... But along with that, like you guys have those systems, not to go off on a whole no, yeah. whole ramp, but uh, you guys get to keep those, right? Oh yeah, I mean that stuff is it, the nice thing about it. It's not like they did it in a proprietary program. It's done on, like, I mean, it's done on Excel. So okay, you know, a lot of those worksheets and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you you can take them with you. They're not. It's not. You know, a lot of them we're building and they're just perfecting too. So, you know, we'll come up with an idea and then or the regional will come up with an idea and bounce it off that guy. And the guy will send out a report right. and say, is this is this going to work for you guys? You right. know, and they put a really high, high um, priority on creating systems that work, which is good, especially when you're doing, you know, ten to $15,000 a day in $14 sales. Yeah, you guys are uh, busy. <laughs> Banging, yeah. So in Austin, you, you mentioned True Foods, which is no longer. Mm-hmm. North, north, no, which is no longer now, and so Fox. Oh, so culinary dropout is still north. I mean, still, uh, still Fox and, and Flower Child and Flower Child still for another year and a half or two years, and then Cheesecake Factory bought them. Well, off. Cheesecake Factory bought the entire Fox. Okay, uh, you know Sam's thing was there. Uh, it's an umbrella now, right? So yeah. they're underneath this umbrella of you know Fox being basically funded. Essentially, I guess you could say by uh, Cheesecake Factory. That being said, you know, there's lots of good things that could come out of it, especially that's for a exactly. fast casual. I mean, so the money, you know what I mean? The, yeah. the systems, more systems, 
you know, because the the store is so prep heavy. I mean, you're talking about a place that goes through seven to fifteen hundred dollars worth of produce a day. Right. So they're bringing in huge orders every morning and knocking it out the door. I remember when you guys opened. Oh yeah. And what you guys were asking for mm-hmm. uh, as far as like how much produce you were going to go through, and I was like, what are, what are you talking about? Like yeah. You guys are out of your minds. And then that's the, what's been the case ever since. In talking to Charles, uh, the funny part about that is he was like, you know, it's going to be really hard to get uh, used to ordering $200 produce a day. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a learning curve, no right. doubt, you know, because right. I'm so used to, you know, and it, it being right in the door, slam you at 11 o'clock. Yeah. And you're not done till 3 you know, with people still coming in the door, line out the door. I don't even know if we've mentioned you were at the Flower Child in the domain. In the domain, most recently. Right. Okay. Uh, both this year, though. Um, okay, we did. You yeah. bounced back and forth. I bounced but back and forth. But the domain is just a nut grub. It's always crazy. It's always crazy. Downtown, surprisingly enough, is even crazier, wow. but only Monday through Friday. Okay. It uh, Saturday Sunday is a is really a crapshoot. Well, depends on what's the going office on. Office upstairs. Right? Exactly. The, Google. I got you. So yeah, and even though Google has its own kitchen, <laughs> says and, a lot about their kitchen. Exactly. Sorry, kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> their kitchen. I'm sure it's run by Aramark or someone. I'm not sure. I've been up there. It's Flick or Aramark or uh, one of those big. I don't know if, who who it is. I don't think it's Flick, but I don't yeah. know. I mean, I don't think it's Flick. I think there's only one Flick property in Austin. It's that AT&T. The Dell? The AT&T. Dell, Dell is... Uh, they own that AT&T... Pref- uh, the Conference it? Center. Conference Center. The U- UT and uh, yeah. Carolyn. Or- yeah, exactly. The Caroline. Yeah. Yeah, I know I know a couple of the chefs I there, too. I believe uh, the Dell Medical Center. Yeah, oh, really? It's Flick, too. Oh, okay, cool. And I want to say... Oh, there's, what's... Who's this St. David's? Bon Appetit? No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. It's I, irrelevant. I, as much time it's as I spent at St. David's, hi, wife. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you would think I would know. Sure. Um, but most of the time, I just go straight for Chick-fil-A if I'm at the hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Says a lot about their food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so your 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 wife is at uh, St. David's. She works there or goes there? No, she goes there, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. She has some long-term health issues that uh-huh. require maintenance on, on time to time. And, oh, okay. and so we'll go into the hospital and also one of my best friends is an ER nurse there. So we spent, uh, we were there today, dropped some food off for, for one of our friends who's working, you know right. what I mean? So we go, unfortunately we're at that hospital a lot, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. but, uh, good places for sure. sure. Uh, you know, I've always wondered, I figured I've always wondered when I'm there, I'm like, I wonder what these guys do all day long. Here. Like you know what I mean? Because they do have a big lunch rush. Yeah. And after that it kind of dies off. And then it kind of looks like working at a hotel, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, you have your big lunch rush, you have a buffet, you have your breakfast buffet, and then you kind of wrap it up and go home unless there's an event going on. And I don't think it almost <laughs> sounds like you were implying that in a, con- a negative way. At no, a hotel. no, 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 no. I spent five years right. in a enormous, um, enormous, enormous hotel. Right. Uh 2300 Sh- Shout rooms. out Chef Reese. Yeah, I Did don't know. Do it wasn't. Do it was it. Dallas. Okay. But funny thing, I do know Chef Reese. Yes. Oh, well, loosely. But the reason I I actually messaged him on Facebook the other day because he was in a picture with the old pastry chef from my old hotel. Uh, chef Candace? No, no, no. This is from Dallas. Oh, okay. Uh, right. so, this guy Saju, and I was like, "Is that Chef Saju in the picture, Reese?" And he was like, "Yeah, I saw him at a." you know, some sort of chocolate class or something in Dallas that they sent me up there for. Nice. That was really my first interaction, but I've known some of the guys who've been through there in the past, too. Some of the guys who were out at, um, what's the one out in? Oh, Lost Pines. Lost Pines as yeah. well. Yeah, I actually competed in some. Hyatt has a cooking competition for their chefs. Yeah. And competed a bunch of those dudes. It's called the Good Taste Series. Did you compete? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exciting. I did. It was a lot of fun. Um, now, I, if I may be wrong about this, but didn't Chef Reese, wasn't he like, I, he couldn't compete because he was like hosting it or something. That's true. You can't compete if you're hosting it. You're I believe like he was your, your ESC or your one of your sous can do it. Okay. Um, we hosted it one year, um, and our chef de cuisine did it. And then the next year, I went to the San Antonio one, which is well, I, can't I wouldn't remember. Know. I can't remember what it's called. It's a it's like exactly like Lost Pines except for in San Antonio. Oh, oh, they it's right it's out like there. JW. Right, no, you know where the Right across, there's two resorts right next to each other. They're directly across the, the highway from uh, the Six Flags. Yeah. Um, and they're both over there. It's got golf courses and yeah. the whole nine. Um, competed there. I got second place. That's, a, that's um, great. Yeah, it was a lot Is of it fun. Is it a nationwide event? Uh, it's regional and then regional. national. Okay. Regional, and then you go to the national if you win your region. So cool. uh, no doubt, uh, you might know him. 
he used to be at uh, Regency downtown. Uh, RJ, Chef RJ, possibly but he he beat me pretty whole handedly. <laughs> Everyone, we were all sitting there as we're you know plating and we're all looking dorky, shaking our shaking while we're because they have cameras on us and everything. <laughs> and he pulls up his stuff and he hasn't even been in the prep area all morning. And not gonna lie, we were sitting at the bar the night before at about nine thirty, having our last drink, and he was like, you know. We're the only two here. He was like, I bet you me and you are going to get one and two. We're the only ones out drinking right now. <laughs> and sure enough, that's the way it happened. But he yeah. he dominated us. He put together, it was ridiculous. Eh? Uh, like a, We had to do a charcuterie board of some, or we did a sustainable seafood of some sort. Okay. He did a seafood charcuterie board uh, of sustainable seafood, which was kind of way outside the box for everything else. Everyone was trying to do their plated, yeah. you know, normal fish dish. It's pretty cool. Though. And it was really cool. And then yeah. he did a... a barbecue korean barbecue seitan taco that was just out of this world for we had to do a vegan dish and it was ridiculously good so i think all of us agreed we were like well there's no surprise who's gonna win this (laughs) yeah it was a little surprising for me to get second place uh to be honest with you with all the other big like one of the chefs of cuisines from san antonio tattoo herrera was there who's a really great guy he's got a coffee shop now in south uh south side called folkloricos okay it's doing really cool stuff um really In San Antonio. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, in San Antonio. And then uh, Brian Contreras, who used to be at the, uh, well, what's the old hotel called downtown? It's a high up Driscoll. Driscoll. Yeah. He was there. And then uh, a few other people from out of state. There was a couple because, like, our region involved, like, Kansas and a few people like that. Uh, It was a lot of fun. That was my first real experience getting into a cooking competition situation. Any since then? Uh... Not that I can think of. Might have been one at some point. But you mentioned like the hand shaking. It's oh, funny. Yeah. It's like a reaction you can't control. No, there's no way to control it. I I couldn't imagine. I've had some friends who've done Chopped and friends who've done, you know, whatever. Sure. I don't tend to watch those shows a yeah. lot. But Well, we just had uh, Mike Winkleman. Mm-hmm. He was on the podcast, I don't know. Whenever ago, but uh, he was actually on here twice. But he did the chopped as a pastry, as a newer uh-huh. uh, thing that they haven't done, and I believe it just aired. Oh, really? And I'm I'm I meant to watch it. Yeah, but, because they can't reveal if they want it. I know. I've had a couple of friends who who uh, have tried to, you know, break into that field and do that, and all the time they just oh, I can't tell you what happens. Yeah, <laughs> and I want to be like, well, you're home six weeks early, so I know you didn't right. win. Right, so. right. <laughs> a couple yeah. of friends in Dallas have been on. And uh, let's see, a couple of the guys from Fox have been on, too. There was actually a Twins episode of Chopped. Okay. And we have, uh, Fox has a, uh, I got to stop saying we. Um, yeah. We uh, we have a, had a pair of brothers who were, but one worked for Flower Child, one worked for North, and they got tapped to do the show, and they actually won it. So Very cool. You know, uh, I think it would be cool to do. I'm not looking for any long-term commitment on television, that's for sure. Right. You know, yeah. that seems like a big hassle. But sure. I've done... You know, I've done your normal morning shows and stuff like that. And that's yeah. always, that's still a handshaker too, no yeah. doubt. You know, yeah, there's uh, so, sometimes something just happens. You, you feel oh. comfortable going into it. Yeah. Then, almost, almost drop an entire like uh, jar of so something foreign. on live television. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, the, the, but I caught voice it. Voice is you know? shaky the rest of the year. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Luckily, it was almost over at that point. Sure. I've seen some other horror stories from friends of mine who've done them. And I had a friend who was on in San Diego and, you know, they were like, don't look at the camera. First thing, don't look into the lens. Yeah, like you know what I mean? Right at the camera. And, and like, you know, look to the person like you're normally talking to them. And <laughs> and it'll look normal. And don't say any words repetitively. Because people tend to do that when they're on, you know, on television. Just when they get stage fright, I guess. And <laughs> as soon as it comes on, <laughs> boom, he locks eyes with the camera. <laughs> and he starts going... Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. To everything the woman was asking him. Uh, and it hilarious. just looked like he had, he had peed his pants. It was so funny. He was terrified. <laughs> but he probably felt all right up oh. until that point. Oh, it, yeah. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. He was. He was. And then one of the other, the GM for the store that they were at, who used to be, you know, Mark, that used to be the GM for Flower Child, the guy who just left recently. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. He He's like, was helping him set up and they were counting down, you know, five, four, and he was still in the picture, and he dropped down, and he was behind the table the entire interview, wow. <laughs> right below his feet. Gosh. So, yeah, the magic of TV, right? Yeah, right. Well, it's the, kind of the same thing as, like, Starstruck. 
Like, mm-hmm. right? You might not even be excited to meet somebody. And then you meet them and you're like, I can't talk. Yeah. You turn what... into Chris Farley from SNL when he meets Paul McCartney. I hadn't seen that. Oh, one. my God. Oh, I'll and, have to watch yeah, that. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. He asks him a bunch of ridiculous questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that you, well, I've been excited to do this interview with you because I have ulterior motives. Here. Sure, sure. Understandable. You, before your history in culinary arts, you were a. Luthier. Yes, I was. I from the time I was really young, I played guitar. Um, well, real quick, where you were born and raised in, in Dallas. In Dallas, yeah, and Southern uh, Dallas. Obviously, you got into music at one point. Yeah, when I was, I don't know, thirteen or fourteen, I guess my brother started playing guitar. And as we he, do, who were the influences for him? For well, for oh, for, so that was your brother. At my brother or at that time, and you know, I started begging. Probably ten or eleven, started begging for a guitar. Okay. You know, my parents were like, we'll get you an acoustic guitar. I don't want an acoustic guitar. Well, and then, of course, my brother did the right thing, which was convince my parents that oh, electric guitar is a little easier to play for someone who's just starting. Good, good brother. Get, you know, exactly. It's and he, true, though. He worked part-time at the music store, just uh, helping out. We had a little local music store. It's called Ellis County Music now, but now it's, at the time, it was called Guitar Focus. Um, and he would made friends with the store owner and, you know, when the store owner had to go out of town, he'd let my brother stay and keep the store doors open so he could sell stuff, even though at the time they weren't doing much business. Yeah. You know, it was more <clears throat> Ovilla, DeSoto, South Dallas. It's almost rural. Wasn't a whole lot of business out there at the time. The schools weren't growing a lot. So, um, but eventually, you know, he got through the first couple years and they've been open for Gosh, almost 20 years now, I think. Okay, cool. And, you know, still going strong. They've shifted their focus a little bit to band instruments because that's where the money's at with Brooke Mays going out of business that okay. everybody kind of dove on that because that's <clears throat> where the money comes from. Sure. Um, renting band instruments, you know. Uh, and I think they actually crested a million dollars a few years ago, which is very cool to see them when we were making $200 a day to, yeah. you know, they're really, they're really digging in now. So I got really interested, got really interested in playing guitar. Brother, big interest. I mean, at the time, Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, oh, yeah. South Dallas. I mean, I literally, my parents live 10 minutes from his gravesite. Okay. Um, you know, so I can remember going there when I was a kid with my brother to show me, oh, this is where Stevie Ray Vaughan's buried or right. allegedly buried, I guess now. They had some grave robbing attempts and stuff like that. So they, no I shit. think they moved him okay. to another, an un, or a marked grave yeah, that's right. not his, that doesn't have his name on it. But you always go and there's always picks and a bottle of whiskey and, you know, yeah. Pretty normal stuff. Sure. Like, you know, same thing with Dimebag's grave. There's always shit all over it, <laughs> you know. Um, and then uh, got real interested in the idea of building guitars because I couldn't afford the guitars that I wanted. And I was always around really so, high-end stuff, you know. I was always in around. The music shop. In the music shop. I was around Music Man guitars, Fender guitars, you know. Uh, Those are more boutique Yeah, exactly. High, uh, and then, like, obviously, like, once again, really high-end uh, Martins the, all the time. Uh, I mean, my boss was a Martin freak. He spent a lot of money and a lot of time becoming like the custom shop dealer in Dallas, yeah. and building guitars for people. Okay. And so learned a ton about making acoustic guitars from him. Um, even though we weren't making them, obviously, like the building construction, engineering of them, you know, what this does if you change the wood, shifting the bracing, all this kind of stuff. What was his name? Tim Grant. Tim Grant. Yeah. So he's. Kind of a mentor well, in this respect. Well, in not in the not in the guitar building respect or, or repair, just more in the like you know getting me into guitar first. I think he was my first guitar teacher too at one point. You know. Yeah, it's cool though. To being a guitar player myself, I never started looking at a guitar and saying, you know, I would like to put this neck on here. You know what I mean? I'm a I'm a. I think it goes back to crafting things. I like crafting things. I've always liked building stuff, you know, and it's same thing with food. It's it's a craft. It's a it's a you know a, it's a journey. It's something you learn a lot about, and you know, I think it's one of those things like in a craft. It's like he who with most knowledge wins. You yeah. know what I mean? Like sure. that's why you have people like Paul Reed Smith, like we were talking about earlier, whoever yeah. who have really refined the craft and really up the game. And unfortunately, some of the classic guys are getting left behind. You know, I think you know there was the big thing this year with Gibson and. Them trying to sue everybody for using their. Did they burn a pile of guitars? Or yeah. Something? Oh, they ran it over with a tank. Yeah. yeah real Very cool. classy. Yeah. yeah. They were mad because unplayable. Pe- yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were mad because people were um, using their uh, likenesses in guitars, which has been done for the last 
Well, just 60 take years. a Strat and a Tele. I know, exactly. Everybody makes one. Exactly. I mean, and same thing we, with the Les Paul. You know, but I think where they were really getting into it was with the Flying Vs and Explorers and things like that was the big Yeah, thing. but what, what, why? Well, there were some guys who were like, because to be honest here, like, you think Slash actually plays a Gibson guitar? No. It's made by someone for him, and Gibson lets them put the logo on top of it. Okay. It's a handmade custom. It may be made in the custom shop, but it's made by one builder that he picks out, right? Sure, sure. So the guitar you're getting from them is not the same guitar that your guitar hero is playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. with the exception of a few guitars. Um, I think there's just a few out there that are like, you know, out of the box to the to the uh to the wall, which are exactly the same. And there's some players that like really request that. They don't want their guitar to be like different from anybody else's. They want to show you exactly what they play. Right. I want to be uh, conscious not to go too far in the weeds yeah, because yeah. some of our listeners will be like, what, what the, the hell is yeah. the Silver Sky? But what do you think about the Silver Sky? Because is he playing the Silver Sky? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. He's, I think the only, I read something the other day, the only thing he's not playing it on is on Gravity. Okay. And that's John uh, John Mayer. Mayer. Sorry. For whatever <laughs> reason. Um, and it, you know that that guitar sent the internet ablaze for a lot of reasons. It is right. If there's like the culinary world, and then there's the guitar world. Yeah, and yeah. that was uh, that well, was it was a big thing because it was. Um, well, a, a, it looks like a Strat, it, it, yeah. uh, which people hate when bit. yeah when people <laughs> copy guitars, people hate it. Right, unless it's Sir. Ask Gibson, right? Or yeah, or at, unless it's a <laughs> Sir. So, um, or, or there's a handful. I right? know Friedman. Tom Anderson, Friedman, yeah. the whole the whole bunch. Yeah, so. Yeah, you know, uh, I love it. It's a really cool guitar. Um, it's different. It uh, sounds great. Uh, you know, it's 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 weird. It's one of those things I think the people who are going to like them are really going to like them, and the people who hate them are never going to like them. Yeah. And I think, it. I mean, it instantly became PRS's number one selling guitar. It's like, a, so, if it's a good, solid guitar in my, from my perspective. Yeah. I don't care if it's Paul Reed Smith producing a Stratocaster or what. Exactly. You know, and I am sure that guitar is amazing. Oh yeah, it's a great guitar. Yeah, you know, it's it's fun. But you know, right? Just, so <laughs> we're we're back to you. Yeah. You start getting into uh, yeah. actually building. building. So I get into the idea of building. I look into some different places. There's a school in Canada that's really good. There's MI in at Los Angeles. Yeah, it's you know that has Guitar Craft Academy. There's one in Tennessee now. Um, and I, I don't know if you know, Dallas has an em- enormous guitar show. I think it's the biggest one in the world. Okay. And uh, at the time, I still am really into jazz music, um, jazz guitar playing, uh, and was going to North Texas at the time, kind of haphazardly for music, but yeah, so I was uh, attempting to, and uh, was at the guitar show in Arlington and walked by this booth, this guy, Ed Schaefer, who now lives right down here someplace, down, okay. uh, down off Manchaca someplace. Okay. Um and he was building really nice high-end art shop guitars. I'm talking $10,000 guitars. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I sat there and talked to him for a little while, asked him about his construction, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, hey, you ever thought about teaching anybody how to build guitars? And he's like, well, I don't know. And I said, <laughs> well, I, I, you know, if, you, if you'd let me, I'd, I'd love to come over to your shop for a few days and just hang out and see what you do, kind of take some pictures of your shop, figure out what stuff I need. Just trying to get started, you know? And yeah, for, uh, just for reference, when, just for when reference, is this? Uh, huh? Oh, what, what year? Man, 2002, 2003, maybe? Okay. I was probably like 19 All or right. so. So, but he agrees. He agrees. Yeah. Come over to the shop. Cool. cool. So, get up real early when he was, you, you, you got to be there at 7 a.m. <laughs> okay. I'll be there at 7 a.m. So, I live in Southeast Dallas. Get on the, get on the, he lives all the way in West Fort Worth, probably like 40, 40 minute drive. So I get up super early. I drive over there. Jump in, start going at it with him. After the first couple of days, he's like, you know, I think for seven hundred dollars, you could come and stay as long as you want. And I said, all right, why not? I'll throw you some cash to sit here and pick your brain. And then for like the next year, year and a half, I kind of spent there watching him build, helping him build, doing small projects for him. Very cool. Started designing my own stuff. Now he's um, building these amazing pieces of, of yeah. At the time, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we built a guitar for Eric Johnson while I was there. Wow. Um, we built uh, a lot of jazz players all over the country. Um, but, you know, it, with that kind of guitar, you're only building 12 of them a year. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, still, that's a decent living, right? But, 
you're not building a ton of guitars. You sure. know, we're building two or three at a time. Right. Um, and you're just waiting for orders to get in. It's one of those backlog situations, just like a Kramer knife or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, you want to, you want to, you want one of these? Yeah, you may have to wait two years. Okay. That's just the way it's going to be. Right. Uh, it's like that with every good thing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, not saying Kramer's the best knife in the world, but people do wait years to get one. So, I mean, I'm on a two year waiting list for a pedal. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, all the good stuff is like that. But, you know, and then so at the same time, I'm working in a music store and kind of take over the guitar program kind of fully, scheduling the lessons, doing all the repairs. Are you teaching lessons at all? No. Okay. No, I don't. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> um, I know how hard I was to teach lessons, too. I would get frustrated. I'm not a, I mean, not, not a kid's person, but I think f- teaching guitar to little kids would be my uh, the patience yeah. of a saint. You know what I mean? Yeah. My first guitar teacher... Uh, my my first real guitar teacher, Joel Holkstra, is now the guitar player for White Snake. <laughs> nice, <laughs> but I remember he would get he would teach me anything I wanted. Yeah, anything I want to learn Green Day. Okay, yeah. we're going to bring in your album, bring in your band, whatever it is. Yeah, um, and if I didn't do it the next week, I, I saw him. He got pissed. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> be, we're doing whatever you want, man. What do you? Well, yeah. Why, well, well, this is what you want. Green Day song, <laughs> exactly. Three chords, really? Yeah. You couldn't do that this week. <laughs> so, no, I get you though. And so, you know, I did that for years, ten years almost total, uh, two different times, five years a piece, and then just wanted to change. So I'd always worked in restaurants part time. Uh, all kinds of places. I mean, name a place here in Austin. I used to work at Jazz here in Austin, which is, I don't know if you remember that. It used to be on 6th Street. It's, I believe, Bikinis is there now. Okay. Uh, it's below the parish. Um, and then I uh, worked at Pluckers, the original Pluckers. The, the little one on uh, used to be on 21st and a half Street. It's not there anymore. Now there's okay. a parking garage there. <clears throat> um, very early on, there was only two stores at the time. Another. Uh, Huge, yeah, right? national. I'm pretty sure is is they're getting close to national all over Texas at least for sure. Um, which is pretty close to national if you have a chain that's running all over <laughs> Texas. That's true. Um, and you know, uh, work there all over the place, <sighs> job to job, just like any 22 year old kid partying in Back Austin. Back of the house, gonna, back of the house, and front of the house, both bartended some. Um, worked back of the house sometimes. I've always been kind of a in, have my hands in the every part of the restaurant. I'm kind of a restaurant nerd. I like feeling the ambiance of a restaurant. I like going into it and like, you know, there's some restaurants I feel like are really exciting when you go into them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they promote uh, an era of, you know, energy, I guess you could say, that some other places don't have. I mean, some places don't have it and that's great because it's a mom and pop shop that sells the best damn tacos you've ever had in your life. I'm not expecting to have them to have mood lighting and and great things, but you know, on the fine dining end of the spectrum or the higher end din- dining end of the spectrum, you see some restaurants just don't make it because they're not comfortable to sit in. Sure, they're not easy to park. Well, you know what I mean, it takes a lot of planning. You know, it's not. It's uh, obviously about the food you're going to eat. But Absolutely. For me, whenever I have you know thought about going out to eat, it's th- it's like going to a movie. Mm-hmm. You want to go into a dark room and. No, there's no distractions and enjoy a film. Exactly. It's the same thing with a restaurant. You want to go, you want to be seated, you want to be nice, dim lighting. It's not, Sway's, yeah. Sway's a great place for that. that very much. Yeah. Very much mood setting lighting in yeah. there. It's very cool. I mean, yeah. Or you go into a place that's ruckus and loud. Like, I mean, honestly, Emmer and Rye, it's pretty loud in there when yeah. it's full and rocking. You sure. know what I mean? But damn, but they put on a show. Yeah, but they get it. Huge pass because it's on Rainy Street. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But, it, it, I mean, damn what a show they put on for you. Yeah. I mean, I went in there, I don't know, three months ago with uh, Chef Jeff that used to be downtown. Okay. Real skinny guy with all the tattoos. He used to be at the Flower Child in downtown after me. Okay. And he was working there uh, at the time. And just really, they really knocked it out of the park. Oh, just he said Emmer and right now. He was. Okay. He moved out to San Diego um, just recently. No, to take over a true food, actually, just because he'd spent his six or eight months doing what he wanted to and figured he better get back to being an adult and being a chef. I think he was he was just kind of grill cooking yeah. at uh, Emmer and Rye. He but just I wanted love to, that. Yeah, exactly. He wanted to get back into, you know, the craziness that is, you know, 
creativeness and and seeing all the stuff that they're preserving and their larder and you know it was really he and he'd worked in places like that in Portland other places and was just yeah. like I'm really ready to get back into that yeah. you know and I'm not happy with what I'm doing so he took a little sabbatical which seems crazy to take a sabbatical to work at a place that's yeah probably ten times as hard as the place you're working at but you know I get it that's you know, he there's wants a, to push himself a little. Exactly. Bit. Wants to so, push what about you? Do you ever like go stage at randomly? Or? I used to a lot. Yeah, I used to in Dallas a lot. Um, okay. You know, being in the hotel in Dallas, you had creative freedom a lot of times. I mean, a lot of times, anytime we had tastings, uh, you know, this type of thing, they're asking us to do it. You know, come up with this, come up with that. You know, what what kind of special accoutrement can we do for, you know, the special guest we have, you know? And so there was the creative nature of that. And then writing the menu for the seasonal restaurants we had in the restaurant was always really fun. Um, But I would just feel this need to go do something, you know, that felt bigger than what I was doing, I guess you could say, or more important, which is kind of ridiculous. It's a selfish idea. But at the same time, you know, you got to fulfill your need for creativity or need for working in a kitchen that fulfills, you know, what you do. I get it. I get a lot of, one of the interesting things about working at Flower Child is it is scratch cooking. It's fast casual. It's not plated, you know, I'm not doing one-handed canals all day long, you know, but at the same time, you you are cooking all day long. I mean, you're cooking a ton of food and it's more like being a caterer almost than it is being a chef. But that being said, you know, there's good money in that. That's one thing I think chefs get behind on. I think pridefulness hurts your career a lot of times. Sure. Because people are, aren't willing to, you know, I, I know people who've spent 15 years cooking in a fine dining kitchen and they're still exactly where they're at, yeah. you know? And it's one of those things, well, I'm not going to cook there. That's not a real restaurant. Well, you know, numbers say differently. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Numbers say true. that we're spending, the people are spending money there and that, it's got four and a half stars on Yelp and your restaurant has three, but you guys won't, uh, you know, change something for someone's allergy. Like I get it. I get there's our, you know, creative integrity and things like that, that you want to keep in touch, uh, attached to your work. But at the same time, I would, I always tell all my like younger sous chefs is like, don't be afraid to go take a job that you feel like is below you to make better money. Yeah, I, I, you're you're cutting your you're you know you're selling yourself short if you do that. I guess you could call it selling out. I guess I'm past the age of who gives a shit if I sell out, right? Because uh, I don't feel like I need you know. It's I've always kind of likened it to the major leagues versus amateur hour. You know what I mean? Like sure. people who who refuse to you know refuse to like take the step to make themselves better, to learn things other than just how to make freeze-dried raspberry dust that turns into magical flying unicorns. Like, you can't... They, like, that's 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 cool and everything. Don't me, get me wrong. What menu is that feature? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. No, I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of pride in that. It's It takes a lot of uh, discipline to learn how to do things like that. But yeah... Sometimes, especially if you agree to the point where you're going to start a family or something, you have exactly. to start thinking. Or you want to even buy a house because $15 an hour line cook don't buy a house. Or you just reside in Austin. <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. I mean, and you have to make, I mean, that's obviously, I'm sure you've talked about that on some of your podcasts definitely. before. But the I think cost the of joke living was that you can have like, what was the joke? It was like a whole kitchen needs to work together to have a house. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I like mean, that. it's, you know, that's, and that's one of the things I do love about Fox. Yeah, I was going to, that's, I, I, you don't need to go into actual numbers, but yeah. I know you guys are taken care of. Yes. And not even me, but the line cooks are taken care of too, well, which good. honestly is more important to me. Sure. Because my job is to get, take care of my cooks so that they take care of me. And, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I know I'm leading and giving direction. But I think that that's one place we miss as chefs, like on retention of people, is like not taking care of your staff. Because if you take care of your staff, I can I can be the. I've had someone say to me before, "Why do all these people still text you who don't work for you anymore?" And I go, 
I don't know. I guess I feel like I, I have information to give them or they asked me for advice and et cetera. And I said, do your cooks that you, <laughs> I mean, I didn't mean it to sound snotty, but I was like, do your cooks not call you the ones who you've, who you've worked for with years? And he's like, well, not really. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, I'm not saying you're an asshole, but chances are you're an asshole. <laughs> you know, friendly. You know sure. what I mean? Like, sure. you, you know, you know, building that. Well, there's that, a relationship there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I think that, you know, that that's a big part of it. I think that take, you know, I, I honestly believe that like it's kind of a family situation or a team situation. It's my job to just not even be the leader, just be the example, I guess, you know, and try to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Sure. But I have a strong, strong, strong feeling about work life balance. So uh So is that something that the whole group is uh focused on? They're big on it. Yeah. Well, Fox or New Waterloo? Well, I was referring to Fox, but... Um, Fox is good about it. Um, I would... Obviously, I don't know. I haven't really worked for New Waterloo yet, but they preach very well about it. So okay. I think that's super important. Um, I think that we all know, I'm sure you've talked about this too millions of times, you know, this industry leads to dependency issues. It leads, leads to drug abuse and not taking care of yourself because yeah. of the long hours we work. But um, the best reference for a podcast for that is the Commodore episode. Oh yeah, it's available right now, but now is a month ago in the right future. Right on, cool. But he's he's there. He's sober. Yeah, five years. He does like a kind of a whatever you call an AA thing for uh -huh. food and beverage. There called Ben Ben's friends. Um, they take care of each other. They go for runs on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Nice. But they're taking kind of the you know the, the fuck you approach to. We're all going to be dependent and alcoholics, and sure, and and I think that's good. I mean, I I, I don't have any problem with people drinking. Uh, clearly, if you're an alcoholic, then you know every day's a struggle. And I'm, you know, I'm I've definitely been there for heroin addicts, yeah, alcoholics, cokeheads, whatever you want to be. I mean, the the, ra the baton range being in the but, kitchen. But yeah, the point is the kitchen kind of can push people towards exactly. That. You know, working 15 hours a day, it's not the easiest thing to come home and. You know, just just uh, lay down and have a good nap, and then get up and do it again the next day. So definitely, yeah, there's some stress for, relief that goes a, on. Yeah, form a numbing. Exactly, and I think that we as a as a culture, uh, and I'd be in the kitchen and chefs need to take a hard look at that and really push our companies to understand that. Wow. Um, I think I know, and you know, I've and I've argued with companies before. I'm like, you guys don't give. You don't give adequate break to your your chefs. It's not yeah. right. You know what I mean? I said, would you do it? Well, no, I'm I'm not a chef. Well, just so you put a you put a title in front of my name, and suddenly I'm you, fucking you, Superman. Or you know, yeah, or this is a, an instant sweatshop. For, you know exactly. Yeah, no. And I when I see some of these guys, and believe me, there's people who are just stuck in this old school oh, wor yeah. work ethic. Really, yeah. they they don't even have to be enforcing it on anybody else. But when I run into some of these chefs, I'm not going to name any names. And they just live there. I'm like, man, you got to get in here and do a podcast. Get out of this goddamn kitchen. <laughs> I've done it. I mean, I did it when we opened downtown. I uh, uh, had a real shortage in talent and for six months. I'm sure, yeah. 16 hours a day, yeah. six days a week. That's rough. The great story. First time, I'm like, all right, six or eight months in, we got to kind of settle down. I've got some support in from other stores. Like, all right, you can take two days off in a row now. <laughs> I'm like, great. This beautiful. Beautiful. I get two days off in a row. Crack the beer. I'm outside on my first day off, laying in my hammock in my backyard. Phone call. Phone starts ringing. It's the regional manager. I'm like, oh, my God. you got to be kidding me. So I pick, finally, I let it go to voicemail. Listen to the voicemail. Uh, so, Kurt, um, the walk-in's down. Uh, we're going to need you to come in. It's kind of an all-hands-on-deck situation. Okay. I'll be there. Get out of my hammock. And then yeah. spent the next 12 hours there. You know? Yeah. It's one of those things that happens, but I, I would love to see, um, you know, I had a good conversation with the guy from New, well, one of the guys from New Waterloo, and, and he said something that kind of hit home for me, and that was, if you're here more than 55 hours a week after three after three months, we need to have a conversation. Yeah. Like, you, this is adequate time to learn this job and not be here 60 hours a week, 70 hours a week. Sure. You know, and, I, and I'm glad that they think that, because I don't think any place should have, like... More than in a lot of industries, you know, my wife and I were talking the other day. She was like, I just can't believe so many people are out, you know, in this gap in between the first of the year. And like, I mean, if you're a senior soft, software engineer, who gives a shit if you're at work? 
Right. You can work from home. Yeah. Or you can take 10 days off in a row and no one's going to miss you. The project will get done when it gets done. Unfortunately, the doors are open every day in a restaurant. Well, most restaurants, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a, a curse and a, and a blessing to be relied upon that much, I guess, you know, in some ways. Um, <laughs> mostly a curse unless you have really great sous chefs and, you know, people under you to back you up. So yeah. that's, that's, you know, but I think that if you back your sous chefs up on things, you back your ESCs up on things that day when you need to take a day off, they're going to tell you to take a day off Right. right. when they know you're, you know what I mean? And if you're taking care of them, that's going to happen for you. So did you get those two days off eventually? I mean, eventually, eventually it yeah. was probably six weeks before it happened again. Though. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So the uh, yeah no it's crazy man you got, and you guys the foxes or the flower child all that was so slim it's always still slim it's still culinary slamming. dropout is oh the amount of money they do is ridiculous it's uh, I mean it's insane and what's also amazing I mean it's for good reason it's great food yeah oh no it's well it's it's fresh cooked food it's real food that's one of the interesting things about fox in general is they have a strong commitment to not bringing anything in frozen not bringing anything like they're making there's someone there at 2 a.m every morning doing pastry at doing bread sure you know what i mean and that's a huge commitment that's great you know i mean it is but there's no other place you know they do all their pretzel rolls and everything like that i think they use easy tiger for a few things but you know that's it's you know and i wouldn't blame them i wouldn't david norman yeah sitting here look at his book uh before we started uh (laughs) had talked to someone who was working with him and told me how much of a mad scientist he was the other day. So I really want to check that book out eventually. Well, you check it out here. Yeah, I will. He, uh, you can buy these at Easy Tiger, uh, both locations, signed, which I ironically did, but I guess I bought it too quickly. And then I had him sitting <laughs> in here, and I told him he was going to sign it, and he still didn't sign it. I forgot. Whoops. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to get to that. But he's yeah, he's that's the bread is amazing. Yeah, so. absolutely. But it's 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 so cool. Also, when you're in a restaurant where somebody somebody was in there at two in the morning getting things prepped up. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah, and when you have your your chef uh, working sixteen hours, I don't oh, know. It's great. fun for somebody. You yeah. Know? Oh, believe me, I I know the people. They're out there. Ambitious ones. Ambitious ones. Sure. And it's not even ambition. I think sometimes because if you. Just and that's passion. in it's passion. I'm not, you know, I'm 37, 36, almost 37. And it's the right age to start doing that. Yeah. Is it's it? it's it's the no, I just can't imagine like being throwing Cisco orders in the next 10 years. You know what I mean? Right. By myself. And you know, you gotta find those guys who are willing to hit the door ground running at 6 a.m., go full force. All day long. Right. But I think I'm starting, hopefully, not that I don't, I mean, I've never been accused of not working hard enough, but I'm trying to shift my focus from being that brute force in the kitchen to being more of a leader and more of a delegator, um, but not letting up to where they don't think I'm doing anything. Yeah. So it's been a hard road for me because I've always been such a brute force. Oh, you can't get those sweet potatoes like, done? Give them to me. Lead by example. Exactly. So how are you doing with that out of curiosity? I've been working on it in the last couple of months. It's starting to get better. You know, so, you there's a, there's a hurdle you have to jump when you do that. And I think that, you know, you especially if you have cooks who've been with you for a long time, they look at you and go, he's not doing as much. He's getting lazy. Yeah. You know, and you have to really, you know, I, I learned this a long time ago, and that was talking to people. And it, I used to think, I don't have to explain to these cooks what I'm doing, why I'm sitting down in the office, why I'm walking around with a clipboard in my hand. <laughs> like, they know that I'm being the chef. But I realized that being really transparent and open with them with, like, everything I'm doing yeah. lets them know that when they're on the line by themselves or they don't have an expo in front of them and they're starting to feel, you know what I mean, like, he's not doing anything. They know. I'm like, I've been up to them and said, hey, guys, I'm going to go walk the orders. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do this. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, well, chef's doing work, so we, we can't bother him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And which is, hmm. yeah. And as, as opposed to where I would just stay on the line and slay with them all day long, sure. you know, which they love too. Yeah. You know, all the guys. Well, are, it makes those days a little bit more exciting for exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I think that it's, it, it's something, you know, that was like one of the questions I got asked in an interview was, you know, what do you think your biggest struggle is right now? And I said, you know, it's kind of like trying to pull back and not be the brute force you know, chef that I've been in the past where, like, I look at a prep list that seems, I got two prep people come in, they go, oh, my God, this is so long. I was like, 
it's then it's like hold my beer. You know what I mean? Like yeah. let me show you. Yeah. That this is doable and I can do the entire list before you finish three projects. Right. So right. you know what I mean? And it's hey, little, but you know, that that that'll just bring me right to that's because you love your knives. That is true. <laughs> I do love my knives. Anybody who likes to prep veggies, like, vegetables like that has uh, got a sharp knife. Absolutely. That he spent a little too much money on. Way too much money. And enjoys them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Right? Am I wrong? Oh, no. You're 100% right. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a knife fun. nerd. Yeah. Um, I know way too much about carbon steel and different kinds of stainless steel and sure. you know the attributes that come with each one of them. And yeah. uh, you know I've got my favorites and... I know you've seen it, but I've been I've been for the last I was having some really bad problems with carpal tunnel. Okay. And I was looking for something to like I guess change the angle of the way I was cutting and standing. Yeah. And I picked up a couple, I still have a couple of them, different Chinese cleavers. Yes. And uh I'm kind of sold on them. What about I, the Kramer? Uh it's great. Does it feel okay? Yeah. I think there's just something with the method. I'm I'm a real like uh, push push cut kind of if you know what that means. Yeah. Like I'm a push cutter instead of a roll cutter. Okay. And so a rectangular knife tends to do me better because um, I'm not flexing my wrist as much. Right. And I'm just moving forward and backwards, yeah. not using my nips. So it's it's seemed to relieve some of the symptoms because it was f- bad for a while. Right? I mean, where I couldn't open jars and couldn't. I mean, I was just losing. How did feeling. that translate to guitar? It's in my right hand, okay. so it's not a big a deal. But you finger pick sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I do both. I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. I'm no, I mean it's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I do both, but it, it, you know, I've never had a problem with it bothering me with guitar. I've had friends. It's my who, fear. I had a friend. I've had two friends. One got real when he was when we were in college. He was taking classical guitar lessons. Yeah, and got real bad, oh, real God. bad. And he started wearing a brace and stopped playing classical, and it stopped. So you know what I mean? That was great. My fear is always when I'm out and about handling knives, don't fucking cut yourself. Oh, I know. Believe and if me. You're, if I, I always check immediately, can I can I play? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, I cut myself all the time. We all right. cut ourselves all the time. Sure. It's part of it. Um, luckily, I haven't been in the boat of relieving a finger from my hand at any time. That That's the ultimate fear. I know. <laughs> but, you know, Jerry... People surf again. Yeah, Jerry, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jerry was missing a finger, sure. and then you know uh, Django Reinhardt only had two. Okay, so that, that I didn't know. Yeah, you know, they were like melded together. Oh God. from like a smelting accident or oh, something. Geez. Yeah, um, and then let's see. Um, yes, uh, and so that's really relieved a lot of that problem. And I've kind of gotten into those um, kai daos or whatever you want to call them. Uh, there's multiple names for them, but the Chinese cleaver, a large, thin cleaver. Yeah, but you know that they use primarily in China for everything. Uh, they don't really use very many other knives. Yeah, at least you know traditional Chinese chefs don't. So, so this uh, you know passion for knives. Mm-hmm. I mean, you clearly see that having like a sharp Uh-oh. tool at your disposal makes your day. Much different. Again, oh. Like a prep list can turn into fun. Yeah, because you get give me the bag of hold my beer. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh no, it's one of those things where like that's what I ended up doing a lot of days was like, okay, we've got all these roasting projects to do, right? Okay, well, I know that's going to take this person so much longer to cut right these sweet potatoes or cut these butternut squashes. Just you guys do sauces, and I'm just going to hand this stuff to you as I'm going so, through. What I'm kind of curious about: mm-hmm. have, have you ever tried to like get the give somebody the bug? You know, and oh yeah, absolutely. Try, uh, try this, or I don't, yeah. I don't even... Oh no, absolutely. I I definitely, and you know, I I definitely seek those people out when they're in the kitchen. If I see someone who I can tell is leaning towards, I can tell this is their second or third kitchen job, and they don't really know what they're doing. But you know, they're like, Chef, uh, let me, I mean, what, what's up with that knife? You yeah. know what I mean? What's up? And so you start talking to change them about your life, it. So. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It'll change your life. You have no idea. And I, I, one of my good cooks, he actually works at CDO now. I remember first couple months he was in, he was, you know, getting the job done. And we were sitting around one day and I was like, those apples are way too thick. Dude, you got to cut them thinner. Yeah. And he was like, oh, this knife sucks. I said, give me that knife. And it was, you know, it was a, a one of the house knives. Oh, okay. You know? Just and like I, Chinese stamped blade. Yeah, exactly. And so I start running through and doing it really, you know, thin with that blade. And he's like, how do you do it? I'm like, all right. So, and then he's like, all right. I said, all right, now try it with my knife. And I think I was 
running one of those like MCU studs or something at the time. And he picked it up and ran through it. It was just like, oh, and I think the next day he went out to your truck and bought a knife. <laughs> then, like the next time you were there. Right, right. You know right. what I mean? Uh, so he he's gotten into it for sure. It's such a game changer. It is. But I guess it's it, there are certain folks who really... Um, they soak it up like a sponge, and they or and they roll with it. And there's others who just kind of. I think that a big part of that for me is once again the craftsmanship thing. When I see what it really takes to make a really badass Takeda or make a really awesome Kramer, yeah, it's it's. I had a friend tell me one time, you know, I he's always spend so much on tools, and I'm like, well, why you spend so much on tools, man? This is what I do. Like, why not have the nicest, easiest thing to complete a job with? Oh, sure, if you're yeah. doing it every day and you're making money, that's exactly right. Why yeah. would you? Why would you spend, you know, uh, fifty dollars on a knife that you can't sharpen and you have to replace every year? Right. What's the point? Might as well get something that's going to last, hold some value. And at a place like Flower Child, like going through some of those, like oh. more, the like like a sweet potato, like you'll yeah. get blisters. Yeah. If oh, your I mean, I have. Sharp. Yeah. I mean, I still you still get blisters. You do three cases of them. It's yeah. like hundred. 20 pounds of sweet potatoes, <laughs> right. you know? I think that it, but, you know, tools are one of those things that, but, which is cool that my wife has never been, you know. She's never getting on your case about that? No, oh, no. But, she knows that, like, that, that's what I do. Yeah. You know, that's my job, and tools are important, you know, right. so. But you have some expensive hobbies. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I do, but you know what? I don't do anything other than that. So right. I think my hobbies, you know, and I, I'm, I think I am a rarity, uh, at least when I talk to people. I still cook when I'm at home. I still yeah. love to cook when I'm at home. I don't think, you know, a lot of guys are either jaded or burnt out, and they just don't, they want to go eat McDonald's when they get off. Well, right? we, I've heard a lot of those. Well, yeah. Like, we go home and I have ham and cheese or cereal. Or, exactly. You know, and then and, where's your favorite place to eat? Taco Bell. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I do love a good late night Taco Bell run. <laughs> that being said. There's no shame in that. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I and it's the other thing. I'm also not, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible, but. I think they thought it was funny. When I was interviewing with Sway, they were like, you know, have you ever eaten at Sway? I was like, yeah, I've eaten at Sway a couple years ago, you know, four or five years ago at the old location. It's really good. And I looked at him dead in the eye, and I was like, but to be honest with you, if I was going, if a chef is going to go get Thai food, I'm not coming to Sway. Yeah. And they were like, we understand. You know what I mean? They, like this, I was like, not that I don't think this is great food. Obviously, I want to represent this brand. I want to push right. this place forward. I want to open up more of them. This is a killer concept. Well, that's, that's good. That's good honesty, right? Yeah, but I'm sure I said like, that. I'm going to go, I was like, I'm going to go to, you know, Tam's Cafe or something like that. Something up in, you know, the Chinatown shopping district or at, going to go to the food stalls at H Mart. H Mart, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And eat there or go to 99 Ranch or H Mart's you know. cool. Yeah, it's awesome. You know what? I haven't, we haven't talked much, much about H Mart. That's, uh, what is that, Reese? What, what, where is that? Uh, off of? Way up north by Lake Line Mall. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm going to put a link to H Mart in the description of your podcast. Oh, yeah. People go need for to it. check that place out. It's great. I mean, the last time I was up there, they didn't have, it was right after they opened, um, which is cool. Whenever they open one of those, either 99 Ranch or the, they always have free beer. And free food. Oh, no kidding. Uh, yeah, for the first couple of days I'll when they're open. I'll keep my eyes peeled for the exactly. next opening. <laughs> exactly. Like he, this guy needs to leave. He's yeah. been here since we opened the doors. <laughs> but, the you know, and they have, it's it's got hawker stalls all the way around. So, essentially, uh, you know, uh, uh, but it's like a trip around Asia. Yeah. You know, you have a Korean stall. You have uh, a boba tea stall. You have... Uh, Viet uh, Viet French Bakery, you have, you know, all these things all lined up in a row. And I used to, when I was in Dallas, me and my wife were sharing a car at the time, and I used the train to get around a lot. Well, the last stop on the train, the red line that goes up into far north Dallas, almost into Plano, drops you off in the parking lot of H Mart. Oh, nice. And so on these days when I head off, my wife's at work, I would just go jump on the train. Yeah, yeah. Put headphones in, listen to a podcast, read a book or whatever, and go up there for lunch. Yeah. And you know, you have like two or three things from each stall. It's super cheap. It's great. Oh, yeah. It's when you know, and then obviously if, and then you shop while you're there and take sure. your stuff home that you can't get anyplace else. Right. So it's ha- great. Have you listened to any episodes here? I think I the- listened to the I Listen to the Josie Maybe. episode. Okay, Josie. Yeah. So the one th- the one thing that's stayed true is I I asked where where do you like to eat? Where do I like to eat? That is the one standard question. Uh, there's a lot of places. Um, well, like good. I said, rattle a- them off. Yeah, H Mart. I love. Um, I really like Little Deli 
if you've never been there. No. Nope. It's killer. Okay. Um, there's two of them now. They just opened up one in my neighborhood, but I used to drive over to the other one to get. Where is but, it located? The new one is on the corner of, it's basically Briarwood and um, Wheelis, which is like over there north, kind of like below 183. Right in the corner, like kind of by the Mueller neighborhood uh, over there. And then the other one is over kind of by like uh, Dart Bowl and stuff like that over in, uh, what do you call that? I guess it's Bull Creekish or over there in the middle of, right in, down in the middle of town in between Burnett and Lamar in that neighborhood north on the north side of town. Really great little deli. Can get a killer sandwich, slice. Um, I like the pizza better than home slice. Oh, wow. Uh, I think it's really good. Um, some really uh, good it pizza. It comes up all the time, and I'm always the Via 313. I do like Via 313. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like the Detroit, the, you know, of that company. I'll tell you what I really like. They have a burger truck that is off the chain. It's called Del Rey Cafe. Yes, they do. And that place is... <laughs> do you a, follow them on Instagram? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And it is awesome. If um, you if you go eat there and follow them on Instagram, your life will then be so much better from that point <laughs> on. <laughs> I do love that place. Um, it's really good. Um, I obviously was... I love Nickel City. And it yeah. just happened to be, we grabbed some food, and I was like, well, damn, this is... I'm, I'm a weird... I. Not anything against Hop Dotty or Pat Creek or any places that make these gourmet burgers, whatever you want to call them. But I, uh, I'm a straight in and out. What a burger! <laughs> I like my burger regular with American cheese. To be right. honest with you, you right. know. So, hey, I, I, shortstop, dude, dude, I give have it a five year old. That's yeah, become exactly. a very standard staple in this house. Yeah, is absolutely. Burgers with a big slice of American cheese. Um, let's see. Uh, I like Old Thousand a lot. I think yeah. it's killer. Yeah. Same with same with Wu Chow. Both. Um, I got to get over to Old Thousand and old get thousand, them over here. Old Thousand's great. Um, Wu Chow is awesome. I yeah. love it. Uh, I love uh, Elizabeth Street Cafe, man. I, 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 I was there today. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 The, uh, that place is killer. I like the the French vibe, the French Viet vibe. I always like food like that. So They're um, planning to open an Elizabeth Street Cafe in New Orleans. Really? Yes. The only thing is there is an Elizabeth Either cafe, I've I've eaten there yeah. in New Orleans already. It's like a breakfast place. Yeah, is so it on some, the train line or on is. the on the on the yeah. trolley line? Yeah, it's I got like I, a pig on the. Yep, I know where it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So love New Orleans. Uh, yeah, man. Me too. Coops, you ever been to that place? Uh, no. Fuck, it's good, man. Yeah, one of the best fried chicken I've ever had. Oh man, they have um, a smoked duck quesadilla that's off the. It's it's a bar, yeah. but they happen to have food. You so, know, well, you know, turkey and the wolf. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then they opened a breakfast shop. Oh. Really? Oh, I, I don't can't. know what it's called. It's so good. Really? It's ridiculous. The last time I was there, we went to Bayona. Okay. You familiar with that place? No, not no. Um, was at one point was a, a James Beard nominee chef, Susan Spicer, um, and in Dallas, her brother was kind of the guy who supplied mushrooms and herbs and greens to people. Yeah, and we had this weird little garden right in the middle of the city and he did all the high-end restaurants yeah, yeah. um and he unfortunately passed away a couple years ago yeah. but when i was down there i was like i gotta go to susan spicer's restaurant you know yeah and it was way too expensive for what i was you know slumming around new orleans for but it was totally worth it yeah. amazing sweet breads just true creole food cool like awesome stuff um here let's see here where else <laughs> do we go all the time I'm gonna have to do um, a new orleans podcast oh my like god nola man. nola all day my one of my friend's dad's older guy had been in New Orleans for a couple of days and went back and he had one of his annual checkups and the doctor came back and was like, "The hell have you been eating?" <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, I just got back from New Orleans for four days." And he was like, "All right, come back and we'll take your cholesterol in a few more days." And sure enough, it had spiked through the roof from wow. eating in New Orleans for a That's week. That's crazy. Well, so good. I mean, especially I I couldn't live there. No. It, but I could. I love visiting there. I do too. My it's, brother lives there. Yeah, I, I love it too. It. I we have a. I have a really good friend who just moved back from being there for I don't know seven or eight years. Yeah, and uh, you know I don't know how she did it. Honestly, I'd probably be dead if I lived there. I mean, uh, it's it, it's a totally different culture. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. And and just the idea of walking out of your house and going to the bar next door and then walking down the street with a drink is completely foreign to most people. I remember you know? when I. You know, first experienced that and came back. I was like, 
I was like going through withdrawals. Like, why can't we have that here? I mean, my neighborhood's pretty cool. Everybody yeah. walks around and drinks here. Yeah, sure. Which is cool. But <laughs> yeah, it, you know, I think that in Austin, man, so many restaurants. We, I, I honestly, this is the fun thing. I don't go out to eat a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I truly cook a lot. Uh, it, still to this day. Well, that's great. Though. We we're, you we're, cook for we, your wife. Wife, big entertainers of friends. It's kind of the place where everyone comes, and you know, like usually on one of my two days off, there's definitely going to be five or six people over for dinner. Nice. You know what I mean? Just yeah. doing whatever I'm doing, whether I'm making noodles myself or I'm making. You know what I mean? Like I think the last one we did was I was working on like a. Uh, uh, a Thai noodle dish and, you know, just making hand, hand pulled noodles and everything like that. Does, and does she cook with you? She is very into baking. Okay. Um, I am not the greatest baker in the world. Right. Um, it's definitely that division of creativeness versus the science aspect of cooking. Yeah. And baking is definitely science. <laughs> um, I don't, it's being, I like, I, I'm sure I could comprehend it, but like the days of, that go into certain things. She's getting really good. I mean, she's picking up. You got to get her this. Yeah, she's getting hard. And that's one thing I've been pushing her to do is get her get into bread. She hasn't really done bread. Yeah. She's done lots of like quick breads and stuff like that. But like today, for instance, we did um, a chocolate brownie cupcake with a lavender icing on top of it, which mm. was really cool, and crystallized flowers. Yeah. She saw it someplace and was like, I really want to do this. I was like, right, let's try it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, worked out pretty well. You know, uh, really cool frosting, obviously. With a, a well, that's purple. a good pair. Yeah, you know, and she doesn't work, so she spends a lot of time researching, and, you know, she'll come up with, hey, can you make something like this for dinner tonight? You know, and she does work. I shouldn't say it. She just doesn't have a full-time job. Yeah. She works freelance, so, you know, it's could be a couple weeks where she doesn't work, and then one week she works every night of the week. So. Right, right. Um, we, yeah, she and she enjoys having people over. I think we're both kind of homebodies in that I... I have a problem with, like, on my days off, I definitely like to do nothing. Oh, you know what I'm I mean? I am the same boat. Yeah. I, it's like I could, you know, luckily I've had this, like, I don't know, whatever it was, eight, ten day stretch where now I'm actually getting out and doing things. Right. But, like, the first three <laughs> days, I just hibernate, you know? Well, you and I have been trying to plan this podcast for, since we've said, since, since April. April. But I'm the same way. You give me a, a day off. Yeah. One of the last things I'm doing is going to do a podcast. Oh, yeah. I mean, I you know, I've wanted to do it the entire time, and it oh, gets yeah. to a point where it's I like... I know how it is. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this came up. Oh, this came up. It's like, why can't my day off just be, you know... <laughs> but you also, like, on your day off, you're kind of recharging, right? Yeah. You know, I, I sit down, play a couple between... hours of guitar. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's really recharging for me. And I do... But I still work on my days off. I tend to, like... I do research. I'm one of those people that, like, has kind of has a never an insatiable need for knowledge for no reason at all. Yeah. Um, I've always kind of thought knowledge is, is at least gives you an upper hand, you know, when you're talking to people, when you're interacting with people. Sure. Um, it well, we're helps. in the day and age for that. Yeah, obviously. I was kind of like that before all this started. You yeah. know, I was a book reader and, you know, big time. I tried to suck up as much knowledge. I've read, uh, I mean, let's go back to guitar for the second. I can tell you what, specs for this year, you know, like pick a guitar, tell you what's different from a 62 to a 68. You know what I mean? It's because when I was a kid, I was a guitar dork who sat there and read guitar books about, sure. you know, what Fender was doing this year, what Gibson was doing this year, you know, why yeah. it was made out of this wood, why have they changed the process, you know what I mean? So, but it was, eventually it was extremely helpful in, you know, talking to guys who'd been around that far and were bringing me their $10,000 strats to set up. Yeah. That they were like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Right. You know what I mean? It was one of those things that kind of instilled some confidence in you. And I, I feel the same way about food, too. Uh, it's never a stop learning pro. It's never, you're never done. It, it never the, stops. Uh, the similar with the knives. Mm -hmm. It's benefited me so much just yeah. to go around. I'm like, oh, is this, is this, this knife or yeah. what, whatnot? Is that? Yeah, exactly. Knowing the dorky stuff that comes along with it, goes it. reading way. message boards, you know, that type of stuff has always been a, a thing that I've, you know, my wife... I've gotten a lot of shit about it, though. Really? Oh, just getting way too into things? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Well, you know, I always tell people, people ask me if I play golf. And I go, no. Nah. And they're like, why not? And I'm like, I, th I would enjoy it. I, too that, much. <laughs> it's too much. Because whenever I do something... You're all in. I go full steam. 
I think it was the Pawn Stars guy who said um, he's like a, what was the word? A connoisseur of all things. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, I'm that way. I've been called, <laughs> I've, I've offensively been called a jack of all trades, master of none before. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. And the guy who said it wasn't worth his salt. But, you know, it's one of those things that like, yeah, if I need to climb up on the fridge, you know, on the walk-in and fix it, I want to figure it out. Sure. I'm not going to call someone and spend six hundred dollars. You you are going to figure it out after you've cracked a beer on your two days. <laughs> exactly. Two exactly. Days. You, start, you drive to work with that beer that day. <laughs> yeah. Like New, New, New Orleans laws enforced now. I had a friend who used to say every single day before I come to work, I drink a beer. Yeah. Someone's like, you're an alcoholic. He's like, no, I have one beer so I can put up with your ass all day long. <laughs> you know. Well, yeah. Um. Yeah, beer is a, a magical thing. Yeah. yeah, I can do that one beer at one beer. I could do a. I never have, but I could totally do oh, a beer yeah. before work. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I could do it. I mean, I've done it back in my cook days where I'm working a double, and not like regularly. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. but like you know, I'm at I'm I'm gonna work from ten, you know, whatever seven to two, and then I have to come back at four for dinner service. Oh, have a, I'll yeah. go lunch and have a beer. Right. You know what I mean? Before I go back. The one tricky part about that is. To continue having them, <laughs> I know it's, it's very exactly. it can be very tricky. You get turned on, boom. Yeah, uh, that's the problem I have with. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I love my. <laughs> we opted for cervezas. Yes, um, but I'm one of those people that I can put down half a bottle if I want to. Yeah, you know what I mean. And yeah, it's this like, has been dangerous. These guys need to come uh, sponsor the podcast. Yeah, Woodford Reserve, huh? Yeah, yeah. nice. That's good stuff. Even if they don't, it's still going to stay on the table. <laughs> But yeah, you know, so I just try to, uh, you know, I, I, I try to stay away from liquor nowadays, although I would like not to. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I love my whiskey. So, yeah, yeah. but what else are you can do? I'm a guy from Texas. I like Lone Star and whiskey. Absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. So you're transitioning now. When yeah. you go back, you're, you're, you're actually done with Fox. I am done with Fox. Yeah. As of uh, last week, took a little sabbatical in between just to recharge my battery. Well, it's good. Do some guitar playing, do some research on food, kind of come in with an idea of some things I want to do just, you know, uh, you specials them? wise. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm working on lots of stuff. Um, I've been working on it since the day I, we shook on it. You know what I mean? But yeah. definitely in the last week, hitting up the library online and you can reserve a book and they will drop it off at your neighborhood library too there you go thank you that's yeah. good public service absolutely yeah. I'm, I'm you know i was uh you know obviously with a new beautiful library downtown it's great to go in there cookbook and look around downstairs if you want yeah cookbook downstairs obviously too but you go up into the i think it's on the fifth floor and i mean they have yeah i'm pretty sure they have uh the the easy tiger cookbook they definitely yeah. have like elizabeth street they have you know any of these new books that are coming out um, top to bottom, they have Roy Choi stuff. They have the French Laundry cookbook, and you can take all this stuff home. Yeah, you know what I mean. You don't have to spend sixty dollars on a cookbook, which sure. is. Don't get me wrong. I have an insanely large collection of cookbooks that does piss my wife well, off. I got to ask though, then some cookbooks that you would recommend. Oh, this was what another I'm reading question right we now. Asked sometimes, <laughs> not, not not now. Just maybe something you've uh, read. Smoke that... and pickles by Ed Lee. Is it Awesome. Okay. Uh, if you've never read it, no. it's uh, really cool. He is that chef out of Kentucky. He's a Korean guy from Queens. All right. And moved down to the Deep South and is kind of fusing Korean food, which I love Korean food. I think Korean food is like one of the highlights of our world as far as food goes. I mean, it's really similar to Texas food and it's pickles and barbecue. So, sure. um, I mean, that's not all of it, obviously, but you know. Um, Have you? That one. Uh, I have not looked through the peach tortilla book. I have been to peach tortilla, and it is really good. Um, very cool, like, blending once again. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the direction um, that Sway is trying to take, to is not necessarily traditional Thai, but modern Thai that's going to fuse some local ingredients. And I've got some, you know, plans with some of my fr- – I've got a friend who's a farmer. And like to really bring in some local stuff. Cool. And then eventually, maybe for hopefully for all three stores, kind of find him, you know, the things we can get for him so he can put it on the menu. What is he growing? Uh, he grows a range of stuff. Okay. Uh, he's out in someplace west. He used to live here in town. So, um, but we go see him at the farmer's market. Really cool little farm. They've only been doing it for a few years now. Um, well, if you ever want to bring <laughs> someone like him in as yeah. a vendor and do an actual podcast talking cool. about the relationship, yeah, it'd yeah. be kind of neat. Um, I've also got a place out in uh, 
out east too, as well as a friend, a friend that I've had for a long time who owns a strawberry farm out there, out by Elgin, and they do like Driscolls for Driscoll. They do the organic Driscolls for yeah. Driscoll. Um, and so, like you know, I can always call them and be like, "Hey, what do you guys got right now? I'm gonna swing by and pick some stuff up." Yeah, you know, they're really cool about it. So. Very you know, cool. I'm just wanting to, you know, I, I want to look at some good ideas for Sway as far as, like, I think that there, there's a real opportunity at that location, especially in the domain, to work out some kind of bigger bar program with street eats and stuff like that. I think that would be, because I don't know if you've ever been up there at night on a Saturday night, but it's like... I like you, absolutely I know. not. It, I not. It's like apparently it's like hell have cometh on the street up there. Like all those bars, oh, are just the dogwood and all that. Dogwood. What's the sports bar? Ginger and Jacks. Oh god. Um, that Instagram bar, whatever that means. It's um, called the Instagram bar. It's called. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> I know the yard bar. No, it's called like <laughs> the milkshake. No, oh, I saw that too yeah. the other day. <laughs> Um, That's the only bar I'm going to. They call it an Instagram gallery, I think. That's what it's called. No kidding. It's it's basically a bar that has these different rooms that you sit in that are super, like, you know. Photo worthy. Yes. (laughs) So, like, there's, I know that I saw a few, obviously, in jest, making fun of them most of the time. Like, this girl sitting in a giant bathtub with all these little rubber duckies and the rubber ducky wallpaper in the room and everything. Like, you can go in this room and just, Post pictures. Okay. Wow. So it's a thing, right? That's, that's it's a thing. It's called like Incredibar <laughs> or something. I don't know. That is like you, it sounds I, like you're making it up. I know, or, or, but believe me, you couldn't get me closer to that than I'd get closer to a nuclear waste site than that. I <laughs> honestly, that's like not my thing. You know, it'd be funny if the rooms were labeled like hashtag like hashtag. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure they are. They are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the whole bit of the whole place. It's like, sure. come here, drink, and take pictures. Which, you know what? They're they're probably doing mighty well. Uh, absolutely. It's right across the street from Kung Fu, which... Kung Fu Saloon. Yeah, another yeah. another place that I wouldn't step foot in. Um, I have once, and it actually inspired, <laughs> inspired one of the biggest fights me and my wife have ever had. So oh, wow. yeah. I was dragged there. That's the name, Kung yeah, Fu Saloon. Exactly. Right? Dragged, dragged there for someone's party of some sort and had to wait in line. And I'm a very anti-line person. I, I say that. I'll wait in line for Franklin's. But... Oh, I've you never know, done that. Really? Never done that. I've done Valentina's, but I got the sweet spot. I go nice. there at 4 p.m. Right before any day. Spoke. No, yeah. there's just not nobody there. I got I had a uh, the the one time I've done Franklin's was super cool because I had done a bit up here on Fox, I think, yeah. for Flower Child. Okay. And it was like 45 degrees outside and it was drizzling. And I didn't have to work that day. And I was like, you know what? I wonder if there's there's not a line. And it was like 9, 30, 10 in the morning because it was like one of those morning shows. So I drove over there and there were six people in line. I was yeah. like, I'm doing it. <laughs> Went down to Quickie Picky, got a six-pack of beer and stood in line. And we were in the door like 11, 15. Nice. You know what I mean? And spent way too if much you money. And factor I, the beer in there and six in line, I could do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, me and one of my friends went, and we toughed it out, and it was well worth it. Yeah, I will say that. Have you been to Valentina's? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, look, Aaron Franklin's brisket is second to none. I, I don't think I've had one better. Right. You know, that being said, I mean, what else does he? I mean, he's got brisket, he's got turkey, he's got you know whatever he's doing, big rib if he's doing it for the time being. But I'm a real big. I like places that have sides too. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's no there's no denying the greatness of, of Franklin's barbecue. Sure. That being said, I Leroy and Lewis is great. I think that that's an awesome spot. Um if you've ever been down there. I haven't I haven't it's, eaten there. Yeah, it's pretty close down there. It's down there by Soursop and by all that other stuff that's down there down here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, around this area. Um <laughs> along with uh what you were talking about, uh, Valentina's. Valentina's. I, I stubbornly want not Aaron Franklin on the podcast, not Miguel. I want both of them at the same time together because nice. I know that they're fans of each other. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I think Mexican barbecue is a great idea. I oh, mean, yeah. it's, it's there's tacos over there. Are just I, you know, insane. I haven't been yet, but you know that Franklin has a taco truck now. No, it's right outside of the barbecue place. It's coffee and tacos. Really? Yeah, it's been open sporadically. It's a trailer. Oh, 
by at Franklin's. Yeah, it's around. It's it's on Eleventh, right there, someplace. I don't know exactly where it's at, but I know oh, it's that, not on the same property. No, it might be in the parking lot. I don't know. I just yeah. know that it's right there on Eleventh. We've got Blue Dahlia over there, Old Thousand. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Over uh, there. Pharmacy went there the other night. Hillside, yeah, Hillside Pharmacy had some oysters there the other night. Yeah, that's good stuff. Chef John was on here from there. He's been into uh, mead, mead making. So he's just gotten into it. And uh, Joseph Sukendra, who is actually featured in this book, mm-hmm. uh, ironically, everybody who's coming up, um, he's he's really into the meat. So yeah, the plan for them is to bring them both on the podcast at the same time and see have talk them about hash. mead. Actually, some of Chef John's meat is in there. Really, it's a I think it's a year old, like now. Yeah, so that's interesting. It'll get you. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh... <laughs> I have a hard time with syrupy things. Yeah. And that stuff is thick, man. Oh, yeah, but I'll taste it. Yeah, exactly. I I always say it's like a disclaimer because I'll talk about this with them in their kitchens. They're like, well, here, and it's the middle of the day. I'm like, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Let me go to my next stop. Yeah. (laughs) But Uh, Mead mead could be the next thing. I know that everybody. For you? No. I'm saying for in general. Like, you know, uh, with the the Texas beer explosion, et cetera. Dude, the beers. I mean, we got... I know. It's insane. I mean... You could I, drink different beers every day. You I, could just drink beer. You don't need food. Anymore. I know. <laughs> it's, so I, it's funny. I've When I first moved down here, the first two years I was down here, I have gone through as much as I possibly could. You yeah. know, whether it be Jester King or Hops and Grains or, you know, whatever. It's like, try everything they have. Yeah, yeah. And I have just, you know, I've, in the last couple of weeks, have been like, you know what? I'm going to start buying Lone Star again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, you know, and when I go out, we got a fridge full of them. Exactly, yeah. and you go, you know, and I've been going to the, the brew pubs too. Like, there's, have you been to Oddwood Ales? No, no, really cool little spot. That's another thing we've fallen on our faces with the podcast is getting. I mean, culinary tales. We need the breweries in here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, friends and allies, all these. Sure, just and, everybody. And, you know, so many of them are closely linked with, at one time or another, with some sort of food. You know, whether it be oh, yeah. like, you know, out and dripping at. Uh, Jester King, you had Pius for a long time. Yeah, which yeah. Was, and now they they're doing their own thing at Jester King now. Jester King's doing their own thing, and Pius moved into town, so I think Pius has their own spot now. Well, they're at oh, Belterra. Oh, are they? So they went a little further out. Yeah, but that's he's got a nice place now. Yeah, that's Josh over there. Yeah, uh, great pizza once again. Great pizza, highly coveted recipe. Yeah, he does not share it. The, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. The there dough was, or yeah, the, the, with anybody. <laughs> Even the employees. Oh, he makes they it They come in in the morning, and, and like, if they're late, the, the team has to wait for them. <laughs> but, hey, that's hey. but it's good, good pie. Yeah. I mean, it's just like anything else. I think you look at, like, Sushi Masters and stuff. Like, they don't give up the ghost for quite a while until they feel like they're, you sure. know, giving the knowledge to someone that actually cares about it. Yeah, yeah. He'll get tired of it one day. He'll give out the recipe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's been uh, featured on all these... Uh, you know, diners and drive-ins has mm-hmm. come through. And when that happens and you go by there, it is a madhouse. Really? Yeah, because the episode airs and and then the just line is out the door for I, days. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Anytime you get any sort of press, it turns turns your life into a, you know, a shit show for a while. Sure. Because for, it, for good or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. For good or bad, you're going to get some business out of it. That's great, right? Yeah. As long as it's not bad press. Because I think... That's the one thing that doesn't go over well. You know, most people say any press is good press, except in the restaurant business. Sure, sure. You don't want someone getting sick or no, one of the not. you know one of the big big six or something. So ulterior motives yeah. to get you over here were this former luthier is going to what set up my guitar, set up his guitar. There we go. Yeah. So it's like Christmas. Yeah. Here at the Austin All Day Podcast. <laughs> So we, we, we'll wrap it up. Right on. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming out here. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Chef Kurt Sway. Yeah. When this is up, go visit him. Yeah, go come see hi. me. Come say hi. I'm sure I'll be staying in the path for the foreseeable future. Yes, definitely. And um, we'll get you back on here. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, you know, six well, months, eight months down the road after I'm in the Charles, tent. bring Charles. You, you know, will uh, you be working closely with him? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think he's, you know, he's over all three restaurants, but he spends a significant amount of time. I think for the first couple weeks or a month or so, I'm going to just shadow him oh, good. in the restaurant because um, Justin and Billy both have their 
you know, stuff going pretty strong. You know, you, you remember Billy both as well? Them, yeah. yeah, you know both of them. They're both Fox guys. Yeah, yeah I know. So. I, it's, I wanted to mention that uh, early in the podcast. Yeah, it's yeah, so both. funny. You guys are all, you know, intertwined. and I think that's going around a lot. I yeah. think that, you know, people... But it's for company, good reason. Yeah, people are, people are looking to scale restaurants and... Fox has taught a lot of people how to do that, yeah, and no. they're really valuable to their company. So. I really, I give them a lot of props, even if it's like a giant thing that people, yeah. wanna, you know, wow, you know, put their nose in the air at. It's great. Yeah, good, good people. Chef Kurt, thank Thanks. you for coming again. All right, man, let's get to this guitar. Yeah, yeah, thank you.